my boss in Dell, I dated him when I was, because he's all American mm -hmm. guys. So of course they like me. <laughs> <laughs> they love Filipino girls. But I dated, he was 27, mm -hmm. I was 24. Mm -hmm. And then I think I dated him a year or two in the Philippines and he went back to Texas mm -hmm. because they're, they're done. Mm -hmm. And then I told him I'm going to Japan and he, he told me, okay, I'm going back to Texas. I'm going to petition you. So he petitioned me. The fastest way to go to America is it's either fiancé visa or spouse visa. Yes. So I got the fiancé visa. Within 90 days, I have to get married to him. Mm -hmm. But when I got there, he lives in his mom's basement. He was 27. And I didn't know. His sister told me, like, as soon as I got there, he got divorced. So he was... He was really married when he was dating me in the Philippines. Oh, wow. Yeah. And when I, when I got there, I don't think, I feel like he was stuck. Mm -hmm. Like feeling stuck, like he was beating me up every day. Oh, no. Yeah, he's a black belter. Yikes. Yeah, I don't, I don't really tell the story, but because I feel like I owe him how I got to America. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so I live in his mom's house. I don't want to tell the police, but his mom and his sister wrote the immigration mm -hmm. and said that, oh, my son is beating CJ. They, they couldn't handle him because he's a big guy. Yeah. Yeah. So they want, so they were trying to protect you. They feel bad. Right. Because we didn't, for six months, I was like cleaning their house, yeah, taking care of their kids, and so their sister like you can leave now. I said no, I don't want you to think that I use your son for fiance visa or visa. Right. But they're like no, and then the, the immigration wrote back and they gave me a visa, like a citizenship. Wow. It, I didn't know it's my rights. Wow. So they okay. So you never married him. We, I within ninety within ninety days I got married to him. But as soon as I got there, he was like, I don't know, maybe he's like, uh, he has anxiety or something. Mm -hmm. That he always beat me up. But I kind of see saw that when we were in the Philippines, like he has a heavy hand, mm -hmm. like he chokes me like left and right, something. Like. Wow. Yeah, but it become worse when I get to Texas. Right. And then he told me like, where are you gonna go? You don't know anybody but me. And my dad only gave me hundred dollars. One way ticket and a hundred dollars. Yeah. So I don't really know anybody in America, and right. he's the only. And he always tell me like, "Where are you gonna go?" You know, I'm yeah. like the only one you know. So he goes to work every day, and I saw he he has a MySpace. Mm -hmm. That was like MySpace that yeah. time. And every day he he unplugged the computer, like I can't go online or call my parents or my sister that I'm in trouble. Yeah. But one day he forgot his MySpace is there. I'm like, what is MySpace? I know I saw like he was talking to other girls. I don't really care anymore because mm -hmm. I don't really love him anymore yeah. after he beats me up. Yeah. So I made a MySpace and I put one picture of me, like a, like a, just a simple picture. And then a lot of guys like wrote me and one photographer from San Diego. Sorry, I need to drink yeah, water. Yeah, 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 no, no. It's quite <laughs> a story. Second. Okay, so you, you got on, you created your own MySpace account. Yes. And you have a photographer from San Diego. So he up. wrote me, um, I'm going to fly you out. It's just one picture I mm -hmm. put. Uh, I'm going to fly you out in San Diego. I, I said, okay, I'm going to pay you f uh, $500 and shoot. But I said, I don't have social security number yet. I cannot work. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was waiting for... You are waiting for it. Yeah. Right. You'd been approved to get your visa, yeah. but you were waiting for yeah. it. Okay. I couldn't get a job in Texas. I wanted to, but I yeah, couldn't because I don't have social security number. Right. I didn't know it was important in America. Yeah. <laughs> and my $100 was Not gone for a anymore. long time. Yeah. yeah. And then he, I was think I didn't even think like there's bad people in America. Maybe what if he's a rapist or a yeah. killer? I didn't know that. Yeah. But it happens like God is always watching over me. Yeah. Like, it's a legit photographer. So I told him, like, oh, hey, somebody wrote me and fly me to San Diego. And he said, go. Like, he doesn't care. Like, he wants me really to go. Huh. Yeah, because 
the immigration gave me already like a citizenship and but I just couldn't leave. I just don't know where to go. Right. You don't I don't have money. Go, and you can't get a job. Yeah. And then as soon as the, the photographer said, I'm going to fly you out, I'm like, okay. It happens that it's he's a legit photographer. And he, mm-hmm. saw, he saw me like, you should have your own website. Like, I didn't know there's a lot of like import girls, like modeling. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. If, and then, because I live in Orange, Texas. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like really like not city. Mm-hmm. So I stayed there for six. So when I got there and he said, like, do you have any friends here? I'm like, no. So he introduced me to Francine D mm-hmm. and one of my friends, Charisse, and they're both Filipinos mm-hmm. and they model too. So I, as soon as I saw them, they're like, like, I can talk to somebody, like I can speak my own language. And then yeah. I said, oh, because um, my husband is like beating me up. And Francine was like, fuck that. And she lived in Vegas. It's like, come to Vegas and I have a job for you. So I went back to Texas and I, I packed my stuff and then I, I told him, like, I have a modeling gig. It's like, he doesn't care. He doesn't even look look for me after that. Yeah. I mean, I guess in some way, thank God he didn't try to force you to stay. Yeah. Um, I think he just want to get rid of me. Yeah. Too. Right. <laughs> so then you left and then you're in Vegas and you're with your friends. Yes. As soon as I got to the airport, my friend picked me up. And then we went straight to the Rhino, mm-hmm. Spearmint Rhino. I was I worked there for twelve years. Wow! So I that's how I build up. A lot of guys knows me. Mm-hmm. So yeah. when you did this modeling job with this guy in San Diego, was it a nude modeling job? Yeah. So when I lived with her, I didn't know she's like famous. Okay. Yeah, her whole house is full of cameras. Like her fans is what before only fans. She's just a really smart girl. Mm-hmm. She's naked every day, mm-hmm. and she's like, she has different f- boyfriends right. <laughs> that comes to the house and they fuck and they have cameras, and then all her fans. She's really successful, like half Filipino, half Chinese. So she's really smart and business minded. Mm-hmm. So she brought me to the Rhino, and all her fans in the house, like it, her website, she does live every day too. All her friends like, who is that little girl? <laughs> so that's how it started. And then in, at the Rhino, well, it's the best strip club. That's why I, st- I worked mm-hmm. there for 12 years. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's how I started. That's, that's a crazy story. Yeah, and every day at the Rhino, I work every day because I feel like I, I lost so much money because I was like already 26 that mm-hmm. time. I was like... Now I need to like work every day. Mm-hmm. So I go to work and then sleep. Go. Yeah. And then I go with her all the time. Car show, Hawaii, San Francisco, LA. We join like, um, she, I was like her, what do you call that? She, like her protege. Oh, yeah, yeah, protege. Yeah, she was like your, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like she was kind of teaching you. Yeah, everything. Everything about the business. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. From putting tampons. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know how to put tampons before because in the Philippines we use napkin. Yeah. So she have to like push that. <laughs> yeah. And then she, do, she does a lot of like penthouse. That's how I get to the penthouse. I did penthouse. Uh, what was her TV. name? CJ Miles. No, her name. Francine D. Francine D. Okay. I think yeah. I've heard that name before. Yeah. Okay. She's like big boobs and she, I learned a lot of, a lot, everything from her. She's business minded. Like, like even napkins, like CJ, kiss this. And there's like my, my, my kiss mark. And then, okay, we're going to sell this. Yeah. She said, you don't know you have a lot of fans. I said, no, I don't know. Because it's like her world is like a lot of fans watching her every day. Yeah. Watching me every day. Yeah. Did yeah. you know that? Okay. So when you first walked into her house. Did you know that you were going to no. be live streamed all the time? No. And she's always naked. CJ, it's like, I'm not really like naked. It's like, I feel like it's like we're kids, you know, like you're right. So we're like, we walk naked all the time. And then when I got to Rhino, my first day, we went to get a, a license so you can work mm-hmm. at the Rhino. Yeah. Because in Vegas, you have to get a yeah. license to be a dancer. Yeah. And then we walk in the back. I didn't know it's a strip club. Mm-hmm. Because the back door is different. Yeah. So the manager always asks, like, the girls to uh, audition. Mm-hmm. Like, they have to get 
change the clothes and wear bikinis. Mm-hmm. But I was like in the, just my regular cl- clothes, no makeup. I look like 12, 16, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> forever 16. And then he said, you can start now. I was like, start what? And so what was your first dance like? I didn't really dance. Okay, this is a good story too. <laughs> so as soon as like Francine's like, okay, she gave me a bikini and walk inside the see you, see, see you inside bitch. <laughs> and so I was like, I walk in the back. It's like all strippers like, and then I walk in the front. I was like, no, I cannot do this. And like a lot of guys because it's like poker time. Yeah. It was big poker, poker players are there all the time Mm -hmm. I was like no I can't do this because I feel like I finished college for this this is my first job in America yeah (laughs) I was like I'm okay with like working in McDonald's or whatever but I it's different mentality you know like oh stripper like I finished school for this yeah and then I saw a lot of girls like all Filipinos like ah okay like they're just naked like normal yeah. And then a lot of guys like, hey, I want to get a dance for me. I said, it's my first night. I don't know how to dance. Yeah, every girl say that. I'm like, no, really. I don't know how to dance. I... <sighs> so he took me in the back and I just sat there and he was so nice. He lives here. And and then like every night, like he goes there and give me a lot of money and I don't have to dance. I, I told you it's my first night. I don't know how to dance. And then I don't have a phone. Mm-hmm. And Francine saw me like, Okay, we have to go home now. I'm like, bye, we have to go. I'm not done, uh, done with you. Like, I paid you, like, every hour. Like, but I have to go because she's my ride. I don't know where to live. I don't know where she lives. Mm-hmm. So I have to go when she goes to work and mm-hmm. when she goes home. Wow. And then he just wait for me at the club every time. And he would just pay you? And- yeah, and then he told me, like, you, sh- you should be a star because everywhere we go, we, we walk in Bellagio, like where she, he plays at or at the Rio, everybody looks at me like for four, from four years old <laughs> to 104 years old. They, so he, he, I became a, like, he's like a business minded. So he's not like really like a boyfriend. Mm-hmm. He became my manager. He opened a website. He put me in a lot of billboards and magazines here in LA. So that's how I started. It seems like you kind of had a lot of like, kind of, for lack of a better term, like angels come into yes. your life. Yes, and one like, is Francine and one is my first boyfriend here. Yeah. They taught me how to like run business and he opened me a website, pay for a lot of photographers, put me in like magazines, car shows. Hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q&As, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.